odd and even signals. A real valued signal x of t, let's say, is said to be an even signal or sometimes this is also referred to as symmetric signal, even or symmetric. So this is said to be an even signal if, what is the condition? If x of minus t is equal to x of t. If you time reverse the signal and and if the time reverse signal is still is equal to the original signal then it is said to be a even signal or a symmetric signal. Now a signal x of t is said to be an odd signal. It is anti-symmetric. Odd or anti-symmetric. This is called an odd signal if x of minus t is equal to minus x of t. If you time reverse the signal, that will result in minus of the original signal. So this is the second way of classifying the signals in terms of odd and even. For any odd signal, please note that x of 0 will be equal to 0. And, and arbitrary signal, any arbitrary signal you take, let's say x of t is some arbitrary signal whose distribution is not known. A signal, this signal can be represented as the sum of the even and odd signals. So xe of t and xo of t. Because you can also represent even signal as xe of t and odd signal as xo of t. So any signal, arbitrary signal can be represented as the sum of the even signal and odd signals. In fact, the, the even component and odd components can be retrieved from the original signal itself. This is xe of t is called the even part of x of t, xo of t is called the odd part of x of t. And the even part can be retrieved as xe of t equal to half of x of t plus x of minus t. And the odd part can be obtained as x naught of t equal to half of x of t minus of x of minus t. From this you can clearly see that when x of t, when t is equal to 0, for odds, for odd functions, x of 0 will be equal to 0. So that's why I gave you a note for odd signals x of 0 is equal to 0. Put t is equal to 0, x of 0 minus x of 0, that will be equal to 0. So for odd functions, always x of 0 is equal to 0. So the even and odd components of signal can be obtained by the original signal itself. So given the original signal x of t, in the exam, he may ask you to find out the even part or the odd part of this signal. Then you have to use this equation x e of t equal to half of x of t plus x of minus t for even signal representation and for odd signal representation this would become half of x of t minus x of minus t. Let us take few examples. Let us erase this and take the first example signal which has the following form x of t versus t say there is a signal area unity now the question is find the even and part the odd part of the signal. Plot the even and odd part of the signal. So keep in mind the even part can be obtained as 
half of x of t plus x of minus t. So x of d is given the problem. Plot x of minus t. So x of minus t versus t. That is time reversal, right? Minus 1, 1. So this is x of minus t. So you have to add both of them and then divide the amplitude by 1 by 2. Then what will be the representation of x e of t now? If you add these two parts, what will be the representation? It is similar to having both these components in the resulted signal. So from 0 to 1, amplitude is 1 and 0 to minus 1, the amplitude is 1. But you know that x e of t will have amplitude half of it. So the signal will range from minus 1 to plus 1 but the amplitude becomes 1 by 2. So this is the representation of the even part. What about the odd part? For odd part again you need to remember that x naught of t equal to half of x of t minus x of minus t. We have already plotted x of minus t and you know x of t. So what will be minus x of minus t now? Minus x of minus t will be nothing but be nothing but this signal amplitude becoming minus 1. So this is minus x minus x of minus t. And then if you add both of them and then divide the amplitude by 1 by 2, what would be the representation of x naught of t, the odd part of x of t? Is this signal also will range from minus 1 to plus 1, but now, now, its amplitude becomes minus 1 by 2 here, 1 by 2 here. This will be the odd component, odd part of the signal. So to verify whether you have done it correctly, add these two signals and you should be getting x, x of t. Check this. If you add these two components, what do you get from 0 to 1? The amplitude is 1 by 2 here, amplitude is 1 by 2 here. So you get amplitude as 1 from 0 to 1 and from 0 to minus 1, the amplitude is 1 by 2 here, amplitude is minus 1 by 2, so you, it becomes 0. So from 0 to 1, amplitude becomes equal to 1. This is how you will find out the even and odd parts of a given signal, any arbitrary signal. Let's take the second example, which is slightly complicated. Say we have a signal x of t with the following format. So now this signal lies between 0 to 2 seconds, say, and the amplitude is from 0, 1, 1 and minus 1 to plus 1. So to find out xe of t, again, keep in mind the equation xe of t equal to half of x of t plus x of minus t. So plot x of minus t. What is x of minus t now? So it is time reversed. So if it is time reversed, this is what you get. 0, minus 1, minus 2. The amplitude is still the same. 1, minus 1. So add these two signals and divide by 1 by 2. So what will be the divide the amplitude by 1 by 2? Then what will be the representation of x e of t? x e of t would appear something like this. Then here, this way. 0, 1, 2, minus 1, minus 2. Of course, this is time domain t. 
the amplitude becomes 1 by 2 here and this becomes minus 1 by 2. This is the even part of the signal x of t. What about the odd part? For odd part we know that x naught of t should be equal to half of x of t minus x of minus t. So reverse this signal. I would like you to plot minus x of minus t first and then add these two signals. And you should see that x naught of t to have this kind of form. Here, like this, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2. This is 1 by 2, this is minus 1 by 2. So this is how we we get the representations of xc e of t and x x naught of t from a given function x of t. However, we need to note few important definitions for of x e of t and x naught of t. In fact, it's not definitions but relation between x e of t and x naught of t. Note x e of t and x naught of t x e of t and x naught of t are orthogonal functions. They are orthogonal to each other. So it's like the dot product of these two vectors is equal to zero. Since they are continuous time signals, so the orthogonality can be defined as if you integrate these two signals from minus infinity to plus infinity, integral minus infinity to plus infinity, x t of t, x naught of t, dt is equal to zero. This is the orthogonality condition. So these two are perfectly orthogonal to each other. So the product of these two functions in any time interval, that is if you range from minus infinity to plus infinity, the product of these two signals should be equal to zero. That is the first property. The second note is the energy of the signal. Energy of the signal can be found out as integral minus infinity to infinity mod x of t square dt. So the energy of the signal will be equal to the sum of the energy of the even component that is x e square of t and the sum of the energy of the odd component mod x naught square of t dt. So the energy 